torch. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine of your sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filters today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. We've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic Relocation 3rd Edition by Joel Skousen. When Disaster Strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm here live in the studio. I'm David Knight, and we've been playing parts of the amazing interview between Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson. They were just talking about the trade-off between liberty and security. How about the biggest trade-off between liberty and security, 9-11? Here it comes. Well, that, that sounds really creepy. You're not supposed to have domestic propaganda, but That's that right. same year, they removed uh, the blocks on that. I know Daily Caller covered that. And then now, on top of all that, uh, we have uh, these uh, moves in your big investigation at dailycaller.com on media matters and these memos right. where, sure, nobody reads them except for the talking points from MSNBC, but still they meet weekly with the White House and they have things like infiltrate and bring down media. It sounds like Cass Sunstein on steroids. Talk about that investigation and talk about that whole constellation of government's answer to the alternative media is to try to infiltrate it like it's some foreign government. Exactly, and, and to try to control it. I mean, I think it's scary because in the end, what separates you from the federal government is they have a monopoly on the use of force. They can force you to do things. You can't force the federal government to do anything. You're a citizen. They can force you to do anything they want. And so it's, it's an asymmetrical contest here. They have all the power which is why you don't want them interfering in the media. When I was a kid, my dad ran something called the Voice of America in Washington, which was our big radio station to the rest of the world, mostly to the Soviet Union. And 
in their charter, like the first sentence was, you cannot broadcast this to the United States because it's a government news organization and there's something immoral about imposing it on our own people because that would be propaganda. And whatever you think of Voice of America, they kept to that. Like they broadcast outward. This was for everyone else but not for us. It's the same with NSA. I remember when I was a kid in Washington, people would always say the NSA is you know, watching everything, but they're not watching us because they can't. It's against their charter. The second that changed, you know, there were major consequences. And I've talked to people like Wayne Madsen and others yes. who were mid-level there. He said, no, we, until even the mid-90s, did not watch people domestically. Exactly. Because the Congress wouldn't let them do that because they knew they'd end up being watched, then they could be blackmailed. Exactly, exactly. You know, I remember when the Patriot Act passed, people saying, this is really scary, and I have to say, I'm always ha happy to admit my many shortcomings. Uh, I remember thinking, yeah, it seems a little hysterical. Like, really, is there anything super scary in there? Uh, you know, a lot of it was probably necessary, but allowing it, the NSA and CIA and intelligence agencies that have been traditionally focused by law outward to focus inward, you know, I, I think that was a very unwise decision. Oh, it's going to be used politically, just like the IRS being used on the Tea Party and pro-life groups, and then they don't even get in trouble because it's the fox watching the hen house with Eric Holder. I, if Obama doesn't get in some type of censure or trouble, it sets the precedent I just can't imagine what it's going to be like 10 years. Well, what was so striking was when that came out, This I think of myself as a completely mainstream person. When that came out, my instinct was outrage. I can't believe that the NSA has the ability to read all of my emails, capture all my Google searches, listen to my phone calls if it chooses, kick up my texts. The first thing, I'll never forget this, was the, the Republican leadership, not all the Republicans in Congress, but the leadership, you know, Boehner, Cantor, Mike Rogers, head of the Intel Committee, they instantly went to the president's aid and I remember thinking, well, who represents me, you know? So it's a big club, as George Carlin would say, and we ain't in it. No. And they're destroying the rest of the economy and, the, and our future at the expense of the general welfare for their club to stay intact when they're not good managers. I mean, I don't like authoritarianism, <laughs> but when it's bad authoritarianism, <laughs> it's really bad. Don't, I mean, don't you agree with that? I'm agreeing with everything you say. It's kind of freaking me out. I don't know. If, I can't believe I'm like on the set with Alex. Right, well, we're going to get to some things you don't agree with in a minute, but let me ask you this. Yes, I do agree with you very much. CPAC coming up. This is the big battle. Every libertarian Republican I talk to, which is the vast majority, at least here in Texas, by travel the country, they're sick of the Republican blue bloods not going after Obama on Fast and Furious and Salandra and Benghazi and you know everything else, the guns. They know Obama could be destroyed on Obamacare. Why isn't there a repeal? What's going to happen in the Republican Party if they continue to join with the Democrats to try to wall off and demonize the Tea Party when the Tea Party really is the Americana revolution, in my view, that could save this country? Well, there are a couple things going on. One, um, I think Republican leadership fears, and they may be right, that the average person, even the average Republican voter, like likes parts of Obamacare, likes the you know no pre-existing conditions rule, which I think is insane personally, but I'm in a small minority of that. Most people do like it, so they're afraid that if they repeal it, they'll they'll take the blame. Um, two, I think. The Tea Party, they understand the Tea Party put them there. There would be no Republican leadership if it weren't for the Tea Party in 2010. But the problem with the Tea Party is there's no leadership of the Tea Party. So it's a, it's a bunch of different groups, some of which are legitimate. Others are just fundraising operations to enrich the people running them. It's the same old story. And without that cohesion, without that leadership, without a clear template for what they believe, a statement of belief, um, they're not as effective. I think it's the fact that it's not controlled, but its basic ideas are Bill of Rights Constitution. Right. That's what scares the establishment, because it's like the establishment is a bacterial infection, and the Tea Party is the antibiotic. It's not perfect, right. and it's got side effects, but it's going to have an effect. Well, it's had a huge effect in that. I mean, the one thing the Tea Party's been really good, uh, effective at politically is beating people in primaries. Like, they can do that. I, we, we were driving through Austin yesterday, and I saw these two guys with a Gasden flag and a Defeat John Cornyn yeah. sign. You know, if you're Cornyn, that really worries you. I mean, they're good at that. They, they beat Luger. I mean, they've, you know, they've knocked off a bunch of established Republicans. And so they do have the attention of Republican leadership. Um, but the problem is, it's, anybody can jump up and say, I'm part of the Tea Party, and it's hard to know exactly. Sure, but I mean, look at, look at Ted Cruz. Look at right. Rand Paul. I mean, they would have passed their gun control probably without them fighting for us. A hundred percent. Oh, they were. Oh, so the Tea Party saved us. Well, I, 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 I could not agree more on that. The, the, the gun control thing, by the way, all, people all of whom have armed bodyguards 
wanted to strip your ability to defend yourself and your family while they remain safe, again, with their taxpayer-funded armed bodyguards, they would, have sold the, they would have sold us down the river in a second on guns, for sure, if it weren't for the Tea Party. So, amen, I, I'm totally... So, again, I'm not, I'm not romanticizing the Tea Party, and I know it's a diverse group, but the establishment's attacking, and every time they leak some Joe Biden speech, he's worried about it, the Republicans are worried about it. You know, they tell the Tea Party, play nice, don't run against us while they're raising money with the Trade Federation oh, and groups that go well, after I agree. And so the Tea Party needs to attack and needs to take over the Republican Party, and then people will see it as a real Americana populist type movement, and MSNBC's failed trying to say they're all racist. I mean, I just don't see it working Racist? Anymore. I never understood that part. I mean, you, you maybe don't agree with the Tea Party, but racist? Where did that even come from? It was like a non sequitur. You're listening to racist? Tucker Carlson never, talking to you know, Alex I really Jones. Appreciate this is a taped interview. Let's get into some stuff we may disagree about all right. here at the end. Look, the, the mainstream media distorted what I had to say about 9-11. All I said was, the hijackers were trained uh, at, at, at bases in Saudi Arabia. They were allowed in, even though they were on the terrorist list. There was a clear, from my research, NORAD stand down. And there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out. The plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Building 7, which I'm going to show you a video of here in a moment, uh, fell in its own footprint. They said they're bringing down Building 7. I have cops saying it so it doesn't hurt other buildings. Why not just be honest about it? I'm not saying George Bush and Cheney had plungers, you know, in there. I'm saying elements in different groups, clearly, just like they're using Al-Qaeda against Syria right now, just like it came out about the Olympics. I'm sure you've seen that um, Oscar-winning uh, documentary uh, narrated by uh, Michael Douglas, where they later admit at the end of the movie that, oh, but basically the Germans were working with the terrorists and basically let them attack as a pretext to get more funding at the Olympics back in the 70s. All I'm saying is if Gulf of Tonkin was staged, uh, if Cy Hirsch says that the bin Laden raid is 100% fake and there's huge evidence, and I've talked to Navy SEALs' families who said that their sons said it was not real, they were going to kill some body double of bin Laden. I mean, when a government's been caught lying this much, I'm not saying I know all the answers, and I know it's abhorrent and sounds horrible, I don't want to believe it either, but all I'm saying is we need to investigate all of these events and not just buy what government says at face value. Well, the, I guess the last sentence don't, or clause, don't buy what government says at face value, of course. I mean, absolutely, and I think we have a right to know much more than we do know about everything that government does. By the way, I'd also say I'm deeply skeptical of what large organizations do, not just government. I think bureaucracy creates corruption and deception by its nature. and. I'm very skeptical of the claims made by any big organization, any big organization. I just don't think that, A, you're taking into account the profound incompetence of bureaucracies. Like a lot of things we think are part of a conspiracy are just like dumb moves that are made accidentally. And B, I think that if there was a mass conspiracy to kill Americans on the part of the U.S. government, that would require so many people's involvement that at least one of them would have come forward and nobody has. So I just don't see, I see a lot of questions. I don't see any evidence of a U.S. Sure. conspiracy. Seabell Edmonds was an FBI translator and, and she was working up until 9-11. She said she heard elements of the CIA communicating with Al-Qaeda up until 9-11. I'm not the only one who knows about this. Too many people know about this. The fraudulent 9-11 commissioners, every single one of them knows about my case and the details and the names and all the specifics. Several people within the United States Congress do know. Everybody in the FBI involved, they know. Everyone in Department of Justice, they know. Uh, Colonel Schaefer, who I know you know, he contributes on Fox some, he said they could have killed bin Laden twice in the month before, yes. or ordered not to. Uh, so I'm saying bare minimum, they want Al-Qaeda running around out there because it's a way to take our liberties here at home. Who can deny that they've used 9-11 to take a lot of liberties and now say, oh, our main mission isn't Al-Qaeda, it's the Tea Party, it's gun owners, it's returning veterans? I don't think there's any question that crises are used by those in power always and everywhere from the beginning of time till present to increase their power, for sure. Either intentionally or unwittingly, I think a lot of these people have you know, clean intentions, but that's just the nature of power. It concentrates more power to itself, of course. 
I just don't believe that anybody at high levels of the U.S. government in 2001 allowed 9-11 on purpose. I don't think there's any evidence for that, and I think it scares the shit out of people when you say that. And I think they have a lot of things to be scared about already, and I think that's a waste of time to go down that path.